Ramblin' Rob from The Greatest Story Ever Told down in Harrodsburg, Kentucky for WAIF 88.3 FM out of Cincinnati. Down here in beautiful Harrodsburg, Kentucky at the Terrapin Hill family reunion. What uh, I like to call Pete and Brenda's little slice of hippie paradise down here in Kentucky. A well, well kept secret. Don't tell anybody we're down here. But uh, yeah, we're live here with Lee from Born Cross I Lexington based. Um, Grateful Dead tribute band. I've heard uh, play, play Terrapin a lot, so uh, yeah. Lee's here with us. I appreciate you joining me. Thank you oh, very much. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, make this a little short interview here. I know uh, you guys have been playing Terrapin for how long? Basically since it started. We sort of had bands out here in like 1990. And we used to play our original music and everybody would sit and listen. And then we'd play a Grateful Dead song and everybody stand up and get into it. And then we'd play one of our songs and they all sit back down and watch us. And then we'd play a Dead tune and they're back up. And we sort of put two and two together and I was like, you know, Lexington doesn't have a dead band. And it seems like most college towns have a dead band. Let's start one. And uh, so we started. So we were sort of born out here and we've been here since before it was a big festival. That's what the it's a thrill to come back and see it sort of get to this level, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, it's really taken off. We've been coming down here for the last four or five years and it has really taken off. Especially yeah. the summer one. So. Well that's always good to know, you know, and a lot of bands do discover that that you know, especially when you're trying to play your own original music, you have to do covers. You, you don't have the same audience you have. People like what they know. You know? Yeah, they want to be able to sing along with it. So uh, you play guitar in the band, I guess. Yep. Do some vocals. Yep. Who else is in the band that couldn't make it down here for the interview. Um, there's Kirk Herod as our singer. He also plays guitar. And then Joey David is the other guitarist too. So we've sort of got three. Um, and then our bassist is Brandon Bowles. Uh, the keyboard player is Chris Fuller, but he's out of town. So we'll be having a friend of ours, Dave Taylor, who's a, a keyboard guy out of Louisville, come sit in with us. He has a band there called Stonewheel. Um, gotcha. And then our drummer, Mark Vanderbo, has been there all along. And then the second drummer we're using this weekend will be uh, J.P. Nowak, who was in Cornmeal until he left about a year or so ago. We got really lucky. We had one of our Born Cross-Eyed drummers leave us a couple of years back. And at the time, we had a gig that week. And we were like, mm, what are we going to do? Right. And I told the, the guy at the club in Lexington, you know, we don't have anything. And at that point, Dino English of Dark Star Orchestra had moved to Lexington. He was like, call Dino. I said, well, I don't know him. Right. So he sent him an email. And about 15 minutes later, Dino was slated to play. And now we've had a relationship with him. So essentially, we never really filled our extra drummer slot. If Dark Star's not touring, we call Dino. If he can't do it, JP's next. And then we pick Todd Copeland from Green Jeans as our third slot. And we sort of have a rotating drummer position. And it's uh, it's really been awesome the last few years to have a guy from Dark Star and a guy from Cornmeal move to Central Kentucky and sort of like the Grateful Dead and you know and get in with us. So yeah, that's we have really a rotating door. It's it's a lot of people are in and out of Born Cross Out. It's probably been about thirty people over the years. Well, and you guys have been playing together since what year? Ninety one. Ninety one, and it yeah. probably brings a lot of new energy and blood to the band. Not to say that's, you guys are burning out, but it's well, always no. But fun you to get somebody new people. in. You know, I used to see that when I would go see the Dead, and they'd have horns be in there because right. you know. Dad always had great energy, but let's face it, sometimes they were going through the motions. And you see that show with Bruce Hornsby, and they'd light up, and they were excited to have some, you know, somebody new in the mix that sort of gets the creativity flowing. And so, yeah, we get, we get to do a lot of that. It was tough for us to get all of us together all the time. We all get older. We're sort of weekend warriors. We have families. Right. And so right. we got to a point we said, let's play the first Saturday of every month. And if you can make it, great. And if not, we'll sub your position out. So that, A, let us play an awful lot more, get onto something regular everybody could count on, and it expanded the band out where on any given month you get some different players in and it, it, it increased the size of our family and it's, it's been fun sort of going about it that way. As long as you're still having fun. That's oh, the important we love thing. It. It's, it's more fun than ever right now. It's so neat. And Terrapin's a great place to see. Oh, it is. <laughs> it is. We love it out here. These guys have done a great thing for the sort of local hippie community to have these things and let everybody come out to their farm and open up to us all. So right, awesome. and the one you know, the one good thing we like about Terrapin is it's almost like a family reunion. You come down here and everybody's friendly, everybody's family, no trouble, no problem. Everybody takes care of the land, takes care of everybody else. It's yep. really a great place. It is awesome. You know, I've never seen a fight out here. Everybody picks up their trash. Right. And you know, there's a lot going on this weekend. There's Electric Forest, there's Romp in Owensboro, there's the uh Romp thing. The other really thing good. up in Ohio with Melvin Seals and them, can't think of the name of it. Family Roots. Family Roots. And yeah. then this one. So by gosh, if you're here, you're family and you want to be here. You know, Amen. And, uh, it's it's awesome. We love it. So how did you guys all get together? How did you all meet? you all come from different backgrounds? you all from Lexington? Yeah, we're all sort of from all over. I'm from Nashville, but I went to UK to college. And, uh, you know, we were going to Grateful Dead concerts. Again, sort of had the revelation that people like it when we play the Dead songs and there's not a local Dead band. Let's start one. And right. it's like, I know all the guitar parts. And 
Kirk was like, I know all the words, and we had another buddy, Toby Myrick, who was our drummer back then, and he knew all the drum parts, and we just sort of pieced us all together and brought people in and started doing it, and it's, it's grown. If you'd have told me in 1991 that I'd be sitting here with you in 2013 talking about Born Cross, I'd have laughed at you. But uh, by God, here we are, and it's awesome. It's really neat. So, I mean, you guys are a Grateful Dead tribute band, pretty much straight up. You know, I've heard you for years. But, you know, do you guys write any of your own original music? We don't in this band, and we've sort of always rebelled against that. And I think a lot of dead bands go out there, a lot of bands start playing Grateful Dead and then move into other things. And people have widespread panic. Right. Should be a dead cover band, and by gosh, Fish, they, you know, yeah, everybody. Um, and in this band, we just sort of never did. We always really liked the dead and wanted to just do the dead. We certainly all have other bands, and members do, and we've done original projects in a lot of directions. But Born Crosside's all about the Grateful Dead and, and some Jerry Garcia music. Pretty much anything Jerry did is sort of fair game to us. But we don't branch outside of that at all in this project. So. Hmm. Well, that's well. I guess that's a good thing. I, I'm not going to complain. I mean, you know, having 800 concerts at home, I'm not going to complain about hearing more Grateful Dead. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> like it. People are happy to hear it, so you know, we keep doing it. Well, especially down here. Yeah. So um, you guys are hardcore Grateful Dead. You guys try to recreate the Grateful Dead sound specifically as far as musical instruments and sound, or do you take uh, kind of your own born cross-eyed version of these songs and take them different places? You know, it's definitely not a recreation. You know, a, You're not a dark star. We're not a dark star. And, and in Dark Star's defense, they don't necessarily do the note for note. I think a lot of people are confused about that and really think that they go out and note for note it. And they don't. They just take the spirit of that particular era. They do change gear for certain eras yes. um, and play certain arrangements for certain eras, but they're still being themselves and they're still improvising, and we do that too. It's really more about getting the energy flowing, improvising, listening with each other. And, uh, and so what we copy from the dead is the energy and the approach, but it's not a note-for-note -note approach. It's certainly not perfect or polished. It's a lot of experimentation and if you guys, bouncing off each other. Have you guys had any uh, you know, shows or set lists that you liked in particular, and you're like, let's cover this, you know, 1978 show? No, and we're horrible about doing set lists. We, you know, we literally get on stage and go with it and see what happens. And sometimes that can be bad because we stand there going, I don't know, what do you want to do next? I don't know. <laughs> and we sit up there and have a debate, and it's like, hey, we should probably play something. There's a room full of people. And the Grateful Dead and we're notorious for needling around like that, Yeah, too, so that. we sort of take that approach. And, you know, sometimes we try to go out there with a framework of a set list, but oftentimes we'll take a turn and get off of that set list and it doesn't end up anything like we planned. So, yeah, that's yeah we never really go in with a big plan other than to try to follow the path where it takes us and just roll with it, you know. Yeah, the guy I had in Thursday, he looks at a set list, starts playing, and then looks at it when he's done, and was like, man, I forgot to play that. That's, that's not that, what that, happened. That, that. Yeah, <laughs> right. that's exactly the way it works, you know. Or somebody yells out something, and you're like, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Or, you know, I don't know. The weather was looking sort of spotty yesterday, so we sent out an email and said, looks like rain, box of rain, mission in the rain. You know, sort of <laughs> prep people. So, you know, you got to go with the flow. The sun comes out, maybe here comes sunshine. But it, think here comes we'll, sunshine. The music plays the band. Sunshine. You know? Daydream. Right. <laughs> So uh, you guys have been playing uh, live for years and years, decades. What do you personally like best about playing live music? Just the interaction with the audience and, and the really, you know, it's it's a jazz band. We don't play jazz music, but it's that approach. It's improvising. It's listening. It's energy. It's crescendo and building and, and all that sort of stuff. And it's right. just. You don't do that in the studio. I did plenty of studio work. I grew up in Nashville. I left Born Cross Side in like 94, 95 and went back home. Actually went to Louisville for a while and then went home to Nashville and did some studio stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the studio is an interesting deal. It's a whole other side of music. It is very different from improvising in your Grateful Dead cover band. <laughs> yes. And just the freedom to get out there and really experiment, be ourselves, but all within a framework of the Grateful Dead. It's awesome. We have such a forgiving audience. I mean, we can go out there and really be ourselves, but we're within their framework and there's no other style of music you can really improvise like that. I mean, you can in jazz, but jazz audiences aren't nearly as exciting and passionate as a Grateful Dead audience. And it's just, it's really fun to pass that energy around and to Be go where it takes you. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's I think mean, it's a unique thing. Yeah, Ben uh, from the Rumpkins, I think, said one of the best. He's searching for that 15 seconds that happens every couple shows right. where you lose track of time. Just we have magical. a lot of train wrecks, but every now and then we, we have some magic, and it's that magic that really keeps you coming on. And the reason we've been here for since 1991, you know, it just. Well, even the worst Grateful Dead show I saw wasn't that bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I used to tell people four out of five Dead shows are pretty rough, but that fifth one will keep you on tour. Right. You know, oh, yeah. and they because they just take it a little higher and just move you, you know, emotionally. Exactly. So, you guys have uh, you know a pretty good. 
I guess, archive of past music. Do you record any of your old shows, post anything to the internet? You know, back in the day, we recorded a little bit. <laughs> we didn't like the way we sounded, so we sort of stopped over the years. And to be honest, we're hippies, so we're lazy. Right, right. And we don't do it. And in the past few years, we've been so lucky. One of the guys that used to come see us originally back in the day is sort of latched back onto us, a guy named Matthew Guthrie. And he comes to every show we do now, and he tapes the soundboard, nice. and he tapes the audience. And he nice. drives from Louisville. He's a Louisville guy, but he drives to Lexington or whatever. And it's been awesome. So the last two or three years, we really actually have started building out an archive where I could go back. You asked me for recording. I produced something from last year, Terrapin, right. thanks wow. to Matthew Guthrie sort of doing that for us. So I joke with people and say, I think musicians think they make it big when they get a tour bus or they're playing a, an right. amphitheater or something. I know I've made it big when I wake up the day after my show and somebody uploads my audio for me and emails me my set list. I'm big. Yeah, awesome. that's true. And Matthew sort of made that happen for us. So in the last few years, we have started accumulating some stuff. We don't put a lot of it on archive, you know, but right. uh, it's out there and it's a... Uh, it's mostly on YouTube or is it on your website? It's, you can get to some of it through our website. To be honest, we've just sort of got most of it. A lot of it's sort of rough and we don't let it out. Right, right. So it's a little tankering. Maybe we're a little picky about it, but... um. If I want to listen to a Grateful Dead tape, I put on a Grateful Dead tape. I don't put on a Little Cross on tape. It's not that, you know, I don't know. It just, uh, I'd rather listen to Jerry than listen to us. But it does get taped by some people. And it's neat to go back after a couple of years and hear one of those recordings. It was fun this week to dig through the old Terrapin tapes and go, what would be good to send? Right, and right. And sit down and listen to, oh, that was neat. That was fun. So it's great to have it. And if I wasn't so lazy, I'd have more of it. But I think Matthew's got us going from here on out. We'll be covered. So. so, okay, cool, cool. So you can go on the website and find a link for that. Um, and I guess that'd probably be free. Have you guys done any uh, charitable things? You guys have any groups you support? Anything like that? Anything you do? You know, over the years out? we try to. Yeah, over the years, obviously we've been really lucky because we get pretty decent sized crowds, and it's not our music. We stole it. Let's face right, it. Right. You know? So we've definitely tried to get back over the years and try to do some benefits. And over the years we've done it for a range of organizations. Um, if there's a band member that feels really strong about something, we'll go do a benefit for it. We've done cancer benefits. Um, we're all animal lovers. We've done several benefits for the Home at Last Animal Sanctuary and some of the animal things out of Lexington. And, nice, um, nice. You know, one of our guys is a part of an organization in Lexington called Art in Motion, and they put bus stops up but with artistic bus shelters, oh, you know, nice. with lots of things going. I'm still pushing for one that says the bus come by and I got on. <laughs> we haven't got that yet, <laughs> but we did an art in motion benefit and just, you know, if somebody comes up with a good cause, we're happy to play for them. Excellent. Had a buddy pass away last year from cancer. We did a benefit for her, Whitney Praska, and, uh, you know, it was called Booba Palooza. She had breast cancer and oh, she nice. had several kinds of cancer. She actually survived right. the breast cancer and another cancer got her. Yeah. Um, but, Anything good that comes along like that, we're always up for benefit. So. Sweet, sweet. So is uh, your schedule uh, kind of booked up this year? Is there any place in the next couple months that people can see you out playing live? Yep. You know, we again, we tried to start doing that thing a few years back. or gosh, 10 years back, a few years. But uh, <laughs> of doing the first Saturday of every month, just because it's so hard with our families to schedule. And it became something our families could count on. And in the last few years, we started moving from just Lexington to Lexington, Louisville. We'd gone to Louisville early on. We sort of dropped off for some years. Now we're right. back. Right now, what we're essentially doing is one Saturday a month at Cosmic Charlie's in Lexington, Kentucky, yep. and then at Diamonds in Louisville, Kentucky. So we'll go Cosmic's Diamonds, Cosmic's Diamonds. Yeah, so gotcha. throughout the rest of the year, get on BornCrossOut.com and see that. The one sort of exciting gig we have is that uh, they have a downtown thing called Thursday Night Live in Lexington where they have just bands play. And we've been trying to get in there for several years, but mm -hmm. being the local hippies, we We've had some trouble getting in, I guess, whatever. Backseat, hippie, backseat. They hired us this year, <laughs> so I'm like, bring your tie-dyes, we're going to invade downtown Lexington. So that's coming up in October, that'll sort of be out of our normal deal of, you know, a, a downtown gig, right. not in a bar. Other than that, we're really just weekend warriors, you know, we've all got other projects and other things that we go around and do, and Born Cross Out is just our chance to keep the Grateful Dead alive, and we sort of... We're the time. Kentucky Deadheads, man, you know? It's the fun time. It is fun, we love it, we wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. So we're going to kind of wrap this up with a couple more questions here for you. Looking back at all the years you've been playing music, what would you describe as your best musical memory? There's so many. You know, Born cross -eyed, they're all a lot of fun. I've had the pleasure of doing some other things. For a bit in the 90s, I played with the fiddler Vassar Clements. Oh, yeah. Because Vassar Clements in the little big band. So a couple of the experiences going out with him, I got to play the Fillmore with him on Merle Saunders' 65th birthday. We opened up for Merle. Wow. And I uh, got to hang out and, 
you know, hang out with those guys and Vince Wellnick and stuff, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Playing the film was a huge thrill for me, and just getting to go do some West Coast gigs. That's obviously not one process, that's just sort of me, but right, right, right. some of the most exciting things I've gotten to do. So, and then hell, every one cross I gigs exciting. We love it. So. Excellent, excellent. So we're going to wrap this up. I appreciate you coming in here. What uh, What do you think, the last question here, we'll make a real easy one, or a real difficult one, depending on what it is. That's how would you make it, baby? Yeah. So what, <laughs> what do you think your favorite Grateful Dead song is? Oh, goodness, my favorite song. Yeah. You know, I can't And, and when you start, when people start doing that, I'm like, okay, I'll give you an era. Well, and they, you know, to me, they all feel different roles. There was, there's always sort of a formula to a dead show. You know, there's a good opener. Bobby's got a country song or a Dylan song. Right. There's a long jammer towards the end of the first set. There's a rocker to close the first set. You open the second set with something big and stuff. Your weirdness of drum space. You come out of that Jerry with the Jerry time. ballad. Right. You rock it again. So there's all these little roles that have to be filled. And, and each song's sort of beautiful in its own way. And there's so many of them I love. You know, and the Jerry Ballads Comes a Time would be my favorite. It's and nice the Rockers, one. obviously Scarlet Fires, tons of fun. Right, right. But hell, man, I love them all. Every, you know, every bit of Robert Hunt's lyrics are just sort of a spiritual experience, and they all have their own place. So it's hard to pick favorites. You know? Yeah, and Robert Hunter, I always tell people, you know, as far as a lyricist goes, you know, he's incredible. But, you know, a lot of people you can't really turn on to the Grateful Dead music. A lot of musicians don't want to hear Grateful Dead just to hear Robert Hunt. Lyrics. No, yeah, you, you know. To go to one of the lines, once in a while you get shown the light in the strangest places if you look at it right. And you know, if you're standing in that place looking at it right, it can absolutely move you to a to a new place in life. And, and, and it's beautiful. And if you're caught up in, oh, this is a hissy old tape, I don't dig this, then it might not get through to you. And, uh, right. Sort of, you know. Well, and that's why we're people. here. It got through to us. Yeah, and you know what's interesting to me? The people that we get through to that never saw the Grateful Dead. I mean, we've got people that come to see us that weren't born when we started Born for Outside. And, and they still love it, and, and they come, and they're getting energy from it and stuff, and it's, they never saw Jerry, they never saw the Grateful Dead proper, they see right. the Dead or Further or whatever the various bands after, so it's a neat thing that it keeps living, it's a neat thing to see Dark Star take it to the level they are now, and how big they are, how precise they are, and, uh, right. and to see that the community lives on, there's not a lot of other bands that sort of do this, you know, that when, Very the, true. when the guy goes and everybody else picks up the slack, and I mean, you can go around nationwide, it's every bit as popular today as it was when Garcia died, with people, just a whole new generation, and that's sort of the most satisfying thing, it's just all the new people, and the way it lives on, and the energy it gives people, it's, yeah, we're lucky to be a part of it, we stumbled into it just because we're having fun, and we love it, and again, if you had told me 20 years later, I'd be sitting here, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought so, so it's, that's a good we're thing. blessed to be a part of it. Yeah, I'm looking anxious, uh, anxious, looking forward anxiously to hearing you guys tonight. It's been, uh, well, since last year, been since I've heard anything. So. You're right on. It's going to so, be fun. You got any shout outs? We'll wrap up any shout outs. Anybody you want to give a shout out to? Anything, Everybody. Everybody. Everybody that couldn't make it here today, we're shouting out to you. That's right. Come uh, down and see them. That's right. Or come back next year. We do this three times a year. Cabin fever reliever in the spring, family reunion in the summer, and the harvest fest in the fall. So, so they're going to do the cabin fever every year now? I think that's now going to be a deal. You know, to be honest, we started with these things, and we would do a derby party originally, and it freaking rained every year, much like you saw some of the rain things yesterday. Caravan's known for weather extremes. And then we moved to summertime to try to sort of deal with the rain, and oh, we sweated. It was so hot. And then we landed at harvest, and it was beautiful, and we sort of got that settled. And then we went, well, hell, I can't wait till next harvest. We're just going to have to have a rainy spring one and a hot summer one, and so now I think yeah, we settled in on three festivals as a, our formula, and we'll ride that out a lot. Excellent, uh, excellent. Well, Lee, I appreciate you coming in, man. I'm looking forward to hearing you. Thanks again Rob, for joining me. Rob, I appreciate me. you being here and doing this, man. And uh, looking forward. Thanks a lot, brother. Thank you.